Hi, it's Wednesday, the, gosh, the 8th of July, that's what it is, and I'm continuing to read through the Acts of the Apostles, or the Book of Acts uh, in the Bible, uh, a book written by the same person who wrote Luke's Gospel, so sometimes I'll refer to the author as, as Luke, um, which is more of a convention than a historical reality, but we'll call the writer Luke. So same person who wrote Luke, the uh, Gospel of Luke, also continued to write the book of Acts, which is the story of how the early church forms itself, how um, how the faith is lived out. And, and I think there's something in this for us, um, not just for history, but, but for us personally, uh, for us as we try to imagine doing a new thing um, for churches and communities uh, since COVID-19, we have had to reimagine and that reimagining will continue even as we work our way through this pandemic. Um, we're not going to go back to the way things were entirely. Um, but then again, church isn't meant to be a sentimental task. Uh, so the question before us is how do we how do we respond to a new normal? What do we do? It's the same way that the apostles would looked at each other and, okay, now if Jesus isn't here to tell us what to do, sure, we have the Spirit, but what are we supposed to, how are we supposed to do this? Uh, so I think this is very relevant to us. So this is about, about reimagining. This is about, about building um, anew. And so I think this is helpful. It's also fair to read these things very personally and wonder what God is saying to to you, saying to me um, in this passage. I mean, we can read the history of it and go, okay, so this happened back in the first century and this kind of thing happened here in Jerusalem. But the question is, is what is God actually trying to say to us here and now? What do we need to hear um, in 2020? So with all of that in mind, I'm going to jump in. We'll be reading chapter three. I'm going to do the first 10 verses, one to 10. And uh, well, here we go. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. And people would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms for those entering the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. And Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So there you go. Peter and John go into the temple at a time of prayer, three o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know about you, but most of us don't have sort of a, a timely prayer regimen uh, anymore where we pray at nine, pray at noon, pray at three, pray, pray at six. Um, Muslims do. Uh, well, devout Jews in the first century did as well. Um, there were times for prayer. So we're going in for the hour of prayer. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. And, <clears throat> and there is a man at the beautiful gate um, begging essentially. He's asking for alms. That's what he did. Uh, he is lame. What, what is meant by lame, we don't know, other than he cannot, he cannot walk. Uh, he is unable to walk, and he has been that way since birth. And so he is asking for, for money. And people give it to him. They're on their way in to pray, and of course they see this poor person here, this, this pitiful creature, and of course they are moved to to give him some coins. Um, but that's not what happens with Peter and John. They, they look at him and Peter says, look at us. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. 
and he is healed. So, on the face of it, I mean, it would seem to be this is a story uh, that shows us that the apostles, in fact, have picked up where Jesus left off. As promised, um, they continue to have the power to heal, and they heal in Jesus' name. It, it, it's not by my power. Uh, in fact, he doesn't even say uh, by, by God's power. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ. So there is a theology there. God is revealed through Jesus, um, and Jesus is shared by the apostles, and the power moves through like that. So this could simply be um, a confirmation story. Yes, look at this. They have the power. The ministry continues. There is still healing. Miracles still happen. And, and maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough for, for those of us who wonder how will we go on? Will the Spirit continue uh, in us in new times? And maybe the answer is yes. Yes, of course it will. It did for them. It will for us. Um, I do recognize that there are people who don't believe in miraculous healings. Um, th th this idea that somebody can come by and just say, there, your legs will work now. Um, uh, there are those... <laughs> And I've had these conversations where, well, sure, it says here that his, you know, that his ankles were, were fixed. But if he's never walked before, I mean, come on, his gluteus maximus won't be working. His thighs, none of those muscles are working. Okay, if it's a miraculous hearing, healing, then everything can be fixed. We don't have to so say, yes, I believe in miracles, but only so far. <laughs> I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, but there are those who don't believe in, in miraculous healing. Um, I have never witnessed it, I don't think, not the way it's described here. Um, so, yeah, I have a little skepticism sometimes. Um, so is there anything in this story for those who don't believe in a miraculous healing? Um, and, and also, I, I, I note that back in that time as they gathered... There are a variety of gifts, and healing is one of the gifts, but not everybody has the gift of healing. So, if you don't have the gift of healing or don't believe in miraculous healing, is there anything in this story? I can't do healing, so it's not a how-to. I don't believe in healing, so therefore... Well, I, I think God speaks to all of us if we listen. So I start to wonder uh, about this man who has been been lame um, from birth. So he's had this situation. This is who he is. And every day people kindly take him and deposit him at the beautiful gate. And people go by and they toss him coins. This is a lovely image, um, an accurate image of, of charity. Um, we were often told, you know, as children... Uh, in fact, we still talk about it, to help those less fortunate than ourselves. So we look down at those those poor, poor people, and we give them a little bit of our excess out of, out of pity, I suppose. And I begin to wonder about how many people that I look at in pity. Uh, and because... I feel bad for them. I give them something which makes me feel better about myself. Um, I don't know how much um, this man at the temple gate needed alms. I mean, he's got people who carry him to the gate every day. Could they also not feed him? Could he? Does he not live in community with them? Where He's not homeless, apparently. He is just unable to walk. And so he sits there, and on the way to church, we throw him something so we feel good about ourselves when we go in to be with God. I wonder about that as, a, as an act of faith. Um, it, it separates me from the one I'm throwing alms to. I don't know. I, I, I wonder uh, about, about this. Um, I know the first time I think I heard this, or, or often when I've read it, um, when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms, and Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. 
when I've heard that in the past or read it in the past, I have made it very stern. Uh, Peter looked intently at him and said, look at us. Maybe that's a reflection of my childhood uh, and teachers saying, look at me when I'm speaking to you. But there seemed to be a, a sense of just, if you want help, then you look at me. But today, as I read it, it felt different. In fact, Peter looked intently at him, as did John. And then he says, look at us. And I see it now as a request. Please, please, let, let's, let's look at each other. Let me not simply throw things anonymously at you. Um, but actually, let's see what relationship might be like. Let's look at each other please. I, I want to know who you are. I don't want to identify you by, by your ability to walk. I don't want to know you that way. Let us look at each other and let us know each other. And then Peter speaks in humble words. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give to you. Again, when I first heard those words, I have no silver or gold, that sounds like what I've said myself, what I've heard many people say to a panhandler. I have nothing to give you right now. Sorry, I have no change. Gotta go. I have nothing to give you. But he doesn't say that. He says, I have no silver or gold. I'm, but what I have, I give you. And what does he have? Well, he has that connection they've just made there. And through that connection, through that respect, the love of God can flow. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And then he stood by him and he helped him. Now, I assume that this man made an effort as well. So this man has some agency. He decides that he will try. And so Peter and John create a relationship. In humility, they admit, I, 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 I don't have very much, but, but I have the love of God. I do have perhaps a gift of healing. And, and, and so if you want to, stand up and walk. I will, I will stand with you. I will help you. I wonder if this isn't an invitation for me to look at how I connect with people. Um, the offer comes from a place of humility, not arrogance, not look at me. I'm rich. If you want something from me, you pay me the respect. It's not that. It's let us be in relationship and I have no silver and gold. Um, by the way, the fellow collecting alms likely does because people are giving it to him. I, 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 I lack in things too, but what we can have is in relationship. And so let me help you. That's a different way of creating relationship. And I think that's a different way of shared healing. That means something to me anyway, one-on-one. -on -one. And I wonder if it doesn't also say something, the whole story about, about the way that we do uh, charity, note the air quotes, uh, that we do charity in, in the church. Um, for his whole life, they've taken him and put him down. Um, and, and so there, we're done. So we just put him there and people will give him money. We'll rely on other people to help him. Um, has, has, has nobody said, so, so what could we do to actually help this person? Not just help ourselves or feel good about ourselves by giving him alms. Um, you know, we've done the same thing forever. We'll just keep doing it. And finally, someone says, well, wait a minute, makes eye contact and sees another way. I write the same, well, I don't write checks anymore. It comes directly out of my bank. But I make the same donations to the same organizations over and over again. How often do I stop and wonder, is there a better way that I could help? Is there a better way? Do I do I keep just giving money to the food bank and say, okay, that's fine? Or or is there an invitation for me to, from time to time, stop and look and wonder about food security? And is there a better way to address the fact that there are hungry people in my community instead of just 
making sure that there's rice in the food bank, could I help address the root cause? Could I engage with those who go to food banks and hear what they need and help them stand up again? I don't know. But I wonder if that's not part of the invitation of this story. <sighs> I wonder what people thought when they saw him walking and praising God. Um, it says they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement. I wonder if a few of them also didn't go, oh, okay, well, we're going to have to get somebody else to be there to receive alms because oh, got to give our money to somebody. i got to make a little contribution on the way into the temple. Otherwise, I'm not going to feel very good about myself. I wonder sometimes about our need to have somebody who is less fortunate than we are. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder about that sometimes. I wonder if this story simply uh, isn't a wonderful moment in which Peter moved by the Spirit, Peter living out the ministry of Jesus Christ, Peter sharing the love of God, actually looks at somebody who has been generally anonymous to the world, a receiver of alms on the way by, but looks at this person and says, I see you. Please see me. And in our seeing each other, God moves between us. I don't know. But that's what I'm wondering about today. So I, I leave you to your wonderings. I hope that they're good wonderings. Um, talk out loud. It's, it's, a, it's a good idea, even if you're by yourself. Or pick up the phone or contact somebody. Have a discussion. Wonder about this a little bit and see what it says to you. Um, I would be uh, interested in, in, in hearing sometime what this says to you. But for now, let us pray. Loving God, thank you for this time, this time of open ears and an open imagination. Thank you for this opportunity to open our hearts and to receive your word, each of us in a different way, but to receive it knowing that you see us and you are inviting us to see you. And in that connection, amazing things can happen. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, that's what I've got for today. But uh, until tomorrow, please take good care of yourself. Stay safe. Love somebody because the world really does need love. And know that you're not alone. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.